to Donald Trump and his pathetic band of white, privileged, criminal businessmen. I would like to say to him, yet, sir, yet, yet, yet. Behold the new face of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Enough from you people. President Trump had his most presidential week yet. He talked about building up the military on an aircraft carrier. He talked about fixing Obamacare to health care CEOs. He listened in on parent-teacher conferences at a school in Florida. Oddly, so did I. And, of course, on Tuesday, in his address to Congress, he hit it out of the park. Of course, it helped that the park was the size of a yoga mat. Meaning expectations were so low, his potential for killing it was high. Mind you, low expectations are awesome. My success is based on everyone thinking that I suck. <laughs> but it didn't help the Democrats that before the speech, the media obsessed over a picture of Kellyanne Conway on a couch. Oh, the outrage. But worse things have happened on that couch. <laughs> Just to clarify, rumor has it that for one year, Bill Clinton actually disguised himself as the couch. <laughs> Poor Madeleine Albright. <laughs> Scarred her for life. Got out of politics. But Trump's performance was so focused, it's as if he took all my advice and my Adderall. The best part, the Democrats. First, here's Liz Warren trying to clap. We have formed a council with our neighbors in Canada to help ensure that women entrepreneurs have access to the networks, markets, and capital they need to start a business and live out their financial dreams. Uh, she didn't hear it. Guess Donald should have used smoke signals. I don't even get it. What are you laughing about? And then, and then there was Nancy. Americans purchased their own coverage through the use of tax credits and expanded health savings accounts. But it must be the plan they want, not the plan forced on them by our government. <laughs> Did you just see Pelosi try to roll her eyes? It's the only thing on her face that still moves. <laughs> now, all in all, the Democrats look like they just eaten at Taco Bell, chased it with a large coffee, then realized there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> they squirmed like possums in a trailer park. After all, Trump's saying the things that they want to hear, but it's coming from him, and they can't admit it. They're like a child who refuses birthday cake because someone else's slice got all the frosting. And that's Donald Trump. Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Keith Ellison. Look at them. Oh, you don't have to... They're miserable. It's like they're married. <laughs> And on the worst carnival cruise ever, <laughs> their face is tighter than Michael Moore's yoga pants. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside the hall, Rosie. Even if our major media companies will not call him a liar, we will. He lies. He lies. He lies. That's what you call persuasive. Pretty, I'm pretty sure I once gave her money on the subway. <laughs> Then the post-debate response. This president's speech matter a lot less than the speeches of just about any other president because they're detached from his reality. He talks one way and does another. Elections have consequences, and you saw some of them last night. This was uh, Steve Bannon on steroids with a smile. I mean, uh, start out with alternative facts. Mm. Schumer, Pelosi, and Perez, what are three things that make you puke for a thousand, Alex? <laughs> and finally, what about that rebuttal? I'm a proud Democrat, but first and foremost, I'm a proud Republican and Democrat. <laughs> and mostly American. What does that mean? <laughs> mostly American. What else are you? Vulcan, a Trifid, I don't know. Also, you gotta check out the people behind him. Were they held at gunpoint? 
Did one of them silently mouth, please send help? So instead of Cory Booker, we get a reverse mortgage spokesman. But I don't blame them. For so long, they had been pushing divisive identity politics. So the rebuttal was their feeble attempt to make amends. So they imitated Trump's outreach. But like a drunk accountant trying to sing Lady Gaga at karaoke, it graded. It was a disaster. So as the Democrats tried to beat Trump, Trump did a way better version of them. No wonder Rosie's pissed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's welcome our guest tonight. Like Albert Einstein trapped in a house fire, she's as smart as she is hot. One of my co-hosts on The Five, Kimberly Guilfoyle. I love this man. He is so sharp, he can dice an onion with his thoughts. He's the creator and host of The Rubin Report, the great Dave Rubin. And great hair, by the way. Amazing hair. She loved the ending of Old Yeller. <laughs> National Review reporter and Fox News contributor, Katherine Timph. <laughs> and finally, Niagara Falls is his foot bath. TNA wrestler and Fox News contributor, Tyrus. <laughs> All right. All right, let's gonna, I'm going to go down this thing. Kimberly. We've been yeah. talking about this all week. What can you add to this conversation that we haven't said already about his performance? Yeah, no, I love that whole opening. That was fantastic. I'm truly frightened by Rosie, though. I don't know. But listen, I think Trump's actually, ultimately, he's won the week. Because when you see people acting hysterically like that, and they're trying to make up these fake controversies, when we know the Dems have been hanging out with the Russians just as much, you say to yourself, wow, they must be really terrified. They'll lie. They'll cheat. They'll steal. They'll make up anything to try to undermine his presidency. So when you have President Trump giving an amazing, probably the best speech that he's given at the joint session of Congress, and then you have him speaking in front of the military, looking presidential again, he's owning 45, and it's really unclear what the Democrats are even accomplishing at that point. And you said it, like, look, this is the new mascot of the Democratic Party. If, if they're Obama. lucky. You know what, uh, 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 Dave, what I really, when I watched his speech, it's not like it's Ted Cruz. It's more like Ted Baxter. He's right, you know, he's down the middle. He's not, I mean, shouldn't Democrats, Democrats are going to have a hard time hating him if he starts spending all this money, right? Yeah, well, you know, first off, just on Rosie real quick. I like Rosie. We're, we're friendly. But I am going to have to tell her that she, too, is white. Yes. Right. <laughs> it seems to me that perhaps some of these people constantly complaining about white people need a mirror or they're having some issues with lighting. Yeah. Uh, that said, <laughs> we, we live in probably the dumbest time in the, in the history of man right now. And I'd uh, like to say I contributed to that. Yeah, <laughs> I have no doubt I've been Daily. part of it. Uh, but I get all my information from Twitter, and yes. I was on Twitter after the, uh, after the speech, and I can confirm that half the country thought it was the greatest thing ever, right. and half the country thought it was completely insane, and yeah. uh, we're doomed. Yeah, I, no, but I, I, that point, I believe it's somewhere in the middle, because nothing is ever as great as it, as it is, or as bad. It's a little mix of both, Kat. Am I right? Go ahead and speak to something that I didn't even mention. Uh, well, a absolutely, you're right. Thank and you. And people who thought the speech was awful, I mean, there's certain things in it that just you can't say are awful. He said a lot of wonderful things. I do think that the Democrat, Republican, Americanish guy stole the show. I think that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Weird. I am often tempted, because this show is like a little later, to have a drink before the show. Right. And now I'm going to remember that guy and just go, nope. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can I save my career. In the khakis. <laughs> Can I just say how funny it is that I don't know his name. Yeah. Do any do any of us know his name? Do you know his Thank name? Thank God for that. Where did they come up with this guy? Uh, which one? Which one? Nobody the guy that gave the rebuttal. The rebuttal. Oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, he's the, he's a former <laughs> governor. <laughs> he's I was so like, I didn't even know who you were talking about because I already forgot who he, he was. Said yeah. was such, he said it with such confidence, too. Yeah, it know. wasn't the, his fault. I, He'll read whatever's on the teleprompter. He has Ron Burgundy syndrome. So you think he was framed? Whoever was typing it probably had a dream. It was, it was like the Republican Russian. Democrat. But you know what, Tyrus? I have to say that it was, a, it was a noble experiment. They knew that they had marginalized a segment of society, so they built that diorama of dismal dudes. <laughs> I mean, we live in an era of obstruction.
Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Donald Trump could literally show up at that speech and have the cure for cancer in this hand, cure for AIDS in this hand, and the Democrats would be like, what, no flu cold? No, yeah. no, you know, that's the era we live in. That was, Obama you had it. about Obama, right. Yeah, Obama had it. Now Trump has it. Yeah. His thing is just to keep going. They're going to have their issues. They're going to, no matter what he does, they're going to have a problem with it. He could do, and that's just the state of our country. And they're thinking, they're banking on it, what it did for the Republican Party is going to help with them. The problem is the Republican Party stuck with issues. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being led by Rosie O'Donnell. And you are right. She is certainly white. We're not taking credit for that. Yeah. That's all y'all. <laughs> um, but it's going to backfire because they're doing it in a way they have no other solution. It's just we hate Donald Trump. And that's I don't not think an anybody answer. wanted to show up for that rebuttal. I mean, it was like any takers, no one right. wanted to raise their hand and show up. So they, they got pulled the him out of the bar, and, like, and there yeah. he was. Yeah. He, was like the, uh, <laughs> he hopped on the tractor. <laughs> elderly uh, khaki ads for the Gap or something. Uh, last point. Am I right, though, about the low expectations? Yeah. Was, I, think that, I think that helped. Like, it helped Kim. He, opposition is his fuel, his supplement, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if the bar is Hitler, pretty easy to exceed it. <laughs> well, well we, I don't we mean, all have a friend like this, like yeah. a friend who's, who's crazy, who says crazy things, and every now and again, mm -hmm. they're going to say something that sounds right, mm -hmm. and you go, holy Jesus, yes. that is a genius yes, right exactly. there. Like Craig, that's yes. what we say every day. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. It's true. i got to move on, Kimberly, all enough, right. okay? <laughs> okay see her twice today.